All right, folks, welcome back. This is Bellatro Explained, where we overanalyze every aspect of the game. Our goal, at least for now, is to just get a win with every deck. We've done the red deck, we've done the blue deck. Naturally, we'll be moving on to the yellow deck. Uh, but before we jump into it, I do want to review a little bit our lessons from the last couple of runs. So we know the game gives us $1 for each unused hand that we have. If we win a round with just one hand played, we have three hands left over, we'll get three extra dollars for that round. And so we have these incentives in the game to play fewer, but then higher quality hands. Not necessarily higher scoring hands. Uh, for example, a gold seal card will give you $3 every time you play it. A lucky card will have a chance of giving you money when you play it. And then there's jokers that give you uh, some other kind of value for playing specific hands or playing specific cards. And so we're looking for, like I said, higher quality hands, uh, not just higher scoring hands. With the red deck, sort of the starter deck, the extra discard allows you to dig deeper in your deck. It allows you to more easily sculpt those better hands um, and not necessarily the perfect hand. Uh, for example, when we were doing the red deck run, we were being really greedy with trying to go for straight flushes even before necessarily we had the right deck to make straight flushes. We were just trying to force it, the straight flush, and we run into some trouble where we didn't, we threw away some good hands in order to go for the straight flushes and then we ended up not getting the straight flush and we almost died. We did end up winning, but we were greedy and we almost died. And so maybe we'll play a little bit more conservatively, we'll play a little bit more intelligently this time. Uh, what you should think about in your own runs uh, even before the round starts, even before your cards are dealt, you should think about what is a hand that could win me the round? What combination of maybe two hands will win me the round? And then that way, when you go in, commit fully, go for that. Um, and like I said, not necessarily the perfect hand, but maybe, you know, I draw some hearts and I want to make a hearts flush, but... I want to throw away some of my hearts and play a different hearts flush because you know a different hearts flush is actually going to win me the round. Um, a mistake I see common among new players after using your discards, after discarding your cards, uh, there's a panic that sets in as oh I didn't draw the cards that I needed, now I just have to dump this two pair uh, in emergency situation and then that two pair ends up only being you know, one tenth of the score that you need, and you've thrown away the cards that would have made the full house that you need. And so, uh, one sort of level up moment for new players is realizing okay, I have the two pair. If I play the rest of the cards as a high card, as just garbage cards, the same as w if I were just discarding those cards, then even though I use a hand, even though that costs me a dollar, I get to draw my full house and then the full house will win it for me. And so uh, again, you want to have a plan ahead of time. What is the hand that's going to win? What is the hand that's going to work? And then sometimes use my extra hands as discards. Use my extra hands to throw away garbage cards. And then also with the extra hands, there are sometimes these jokers that, uh, again, reward you for playing hands. Uh, for example, the square joker, when you play four cards, you get plus four chips. And so if you have five hands, you can get plus 20 chips every round. Plus 20, another plus 20, another plus 20. The thing to keep in mind is this is not free. Every hand costs you a dollar. So you're exchanging one dollar for four chips and the question is is that worth it is that a good exchange rate one for four sometimes it is sometimes it isn't uh, for the run that we were on uh, i said don't go too hard dumping all your money into this when you know later on in the game you may replace this with something else um, level this up 
naturally. You know, if you would naturally play two pair, if you would naturally play four of a kind, then allow that to happen. Um, otherwise, you know, don't go too crazy unless you already have the uh, economy built up. You already have the money. You don't care about spending the money. Uh, in contrast to later on in the run, we got the Vagabond. Vagabond gives you a tarot card for every hand played. The requirement is that we have less than $3. So this sort of prevents us from having interest. And so we're losing all that interest money in exchange for all of these tarot cards. Is that then worth it? And we decided it was for the tarot cards. And then so, you know, the next sort of lesson that we want to be thinking about is this interest mechanic in the game is very important. Um, so we want to be thinking about when do we save our money? When do we spend our money? When we do spend our money, what sorts of things should we be spending on? And so with the yellow deck, I recommend the yellow deck as sort of the training wheels. I recommend the yellow deck as the uh, starter deck for learners because with the extra money, you don't have to be as picky about what you're buying. You can just buy different things. You can just experiment, little of this, little of that. Even if they don't synergize with each other, you can kind of go broad and then leave yourself open to pivot into different builds. Um, and so you don't get punished necessarily for experimenting. So, you know, I think that's one benefit. Um, I think also then, you know, with this $10 that you start with, in the first round, you get $2 of interest on top of this. So actually you start with $12 in addition to the $4 that you start with. And so you can very quickly reach that income cap $25 held, earn an extra $5 per round. And all of that extra money for the entire rest of your run then again gives you the capability of you can just buy random stuff without being punished for losing your money. So let's give that a try. All right, we talked uh, in the last couple runs about the tag system. You skip around in exchange for some benefit. Um, and most of the times that we were talking about, we said, well, if you play the round, you get reward money, you get money for your hands, you get money for your interest, you get a lot of value from just playing a round. And potentially you get some value from your jokers, you know, maybe they give you something when you play certain hands. And so you're missing out on all that value when you take this skip. Also, you know, every shop that you go into, rerolls cost money, but you know, the first offering from the shop that's free it's a free reroll and you also get a reroll on the booster packs every different shop has more booster packs so if we skip around we skip all of that opportunity to get booster packs and opportunity to get sort of a free reroll at the shop so most of the time it's not worth it to do the skips there are rare circumstances where it is going to be worth it, but most of the time it's not going to be worth it. So for your runs, at least when you're practicing, when you're learning the game, for now, no skips. Never skip. You will never be punished for not skipping. And then later on, we can talk about, you know, what are the special circumstances where you do want to skip. All right, in the first round here, we said, uh, you know, there's different possibilities for what can win us in one hand. So we should try for that. If we don't get the hand that we're going for, if we don't get the hand that wins in one, then we'll just win in two instead. And winning in two, the only difference is that costs us an extra dollar if we use an extra hand. But then in exchange, we get you know extra money from our interest here on the yellow deck. And so that's kind of another benefit of the yellow deck compared to the red and blue decks as sort of uh you know the training wheels the starter deck is you get less punished for getting bad hands for having bad discard strategy you get less punished because you'll get money from your interest all right looking at this i could go for this kind of uh, flush here. If I discard this, I could go for the spade flush or I could go for the clubs flush. With this two here, the spades flush is not going to win in one. 
Uh, if I go with the clubs instead, then I do have a chance of winning in one. All right, with the clubs here, we should do a check. You need, with 35 base, I need another 40 chips. So here's 10, 20, uh, this is 14, plus three more is 37. So this is not going to win yet. I still have two more discards. Let's find any bigger club than this. Uh, let's try again. And then there we go. We got our clubs. If we ended up not getting our clubs, then what we would do is we would pick up these cards and then play them, or you know maybe these cards, we play them as garbage and then draw some different cards, you know, hoping to get the flush again. Uh, and again, there, the only difference is it costs us an extra hand, but if we played the flush that didn't score 300 points anyway, we would have needed an extra hand anyway. All right, in the shop here, something that we should think about is uh, in the next round, we can either win in two hands. So, you know, we just had 300 points. Now we can win with two 300-point uh, hands or two kind of 250-point hands or with any scoring joker or most scoring jokers, uh, we can win in just one hand. And so looking at these, I've got the option between the runner gives me a reward for straights the Droll Joker gives me a reward for flushes. And so between these, maybe I'm more interested in the runner, which is going to you know keep gaining chips over the course of the run, um, compared to the Droll Joker, which you know will give me plus 10 molts now. And then you know maybe later on I'll replace it with something else that gives me more molt. Uh, what I want to demonstrate here is let's say we didn't get these scoring jokers, you know, it's very possible you get consumables instead, you get planet cards. And so if you get planet cards, you can take a planet card from the shop as sort of, you know, that also gives you score. And then you can use that to win the round. Um, so let's pretend we didn't see these. Let's pretend we didn't get these jokers. We can still win the next round perfectly fine uh, with two hands. And then we can save our money for interest. So let's go here, we've got sixes maybe i'm looking to make a full house and so uh you know maybe another king or any other pair would work not quite like that maybe uh an ace here so here sixes and we could go with the aces or we could go sixes with the fives uh something to think about we already used two fives so there's only one five left compared to there's two aces left. So this full house with the aces, this is worth more points. But since I need two hands anyway, it doesn't really matter how many points, I'm gonna need two hands. So let's play the full house with the fives. And then now we can think about, okay, what are we going for next? We've got two eights here, we've got the aces. Uh, I could go for a full house with the eights and aces. There are four possibilities for me to draw, or uh, it doesn't look like a straight is gonna happen. We could go for a flush. What kind of flush can we make? You know, we can go discard these and make a clubs flush, but we would need to draw three clubs. I'm gonna go for the full house. I think it's close between the full house versus the flush. Uh, not like that. But what I can do now is I can play two pair, two times will do it. So there's two pair once and then another two pair. So instead of playing two hands to win, we had to play three hands that cost us a dollar. You know, you can think about if I have an extra joker and it, you know, I spend money, so I lose interest. 
but then the scoring allows me to win with less hands than I'm gaining money from the extra hand. So trade-offs there. All right, now looking at the uh, final, or looking at the boss here, we've got 600 points that we need. And so we need to either try to play two hands, 300 points each, or just play with any scoring joker, one hand. And so uh, a heuristic that I like to use is, on average, you wanna get at least one scoring joker per ante. So for the first three rounds, you just need one scoring joker. For the next three rounds, two scoring jokers and then by anti three you want to have at least three scoring jokers uh that is if you want to play safe you don't necessarily need three scoring jokers but if you want to play safe that will definitely get the job done and so here maybe what i'm interested in is even steven uh i should also say you know we can win in two hands except the hook when you play a hand, it discards random cards. So this strategy of, oh, I can just play high card as garbage and then you know dig by doing that, you can't do that on the hook. If you play garbage hands, it discards your cards, you can't actually hold on to anything. And so it is easiest or safest to try to win in one. We'll pick up even Steven to allow us to do that. And then I'm going to save the rest of my money for interest. All right, so going into the hook here, I'm looking for even cards. So I have two pair here that I'm going to throw away. I have fives and sixes with a full house. This full house is worth uh, about 250 points. So I know this is not one of the 300 point ones. Um, so, you know, maybe it's like 250 points. And then I know with four molt here, even Steven gives me plus eight. That'll be three times. It'll be triple uh, 200. So I know that's going to be 600 already. Or actually 800. So now I know in the next round that I need 800 points. Uh, a full house with just two even cards or even three even cards that will win the round for me in the next one. Which means I don't need to buy anything. But I do have $40, so we might as well buy stuff. Uh, the first thing that I'm most interested in buying, uh, the grabber gives me an extra hand. And sometimes I need that extra hand to dig. Most of the time, I don't need the extra hand. Most of the time, this is just plus $1. Spend $10, get $1 every round. Okay, now uh, other stuff that I might want to buy. Uh, Celestial packs could give me more scoring that I don't necessarily need right now. Uh, if I'm playing full houses, Zany Joker is compatible with that. Uh, the Constellation is one of these permanently scaling jokers and then also it's a uh, multiplicative bonus it's times molt instead of this plus molt from even steven so constellation is one that probably you don't pass and definitely this early in the game you don't pass and so you know maybe what i want to do is i want the celestial pack to level this up with the planet card since the four dollars you know i'm already below 25 it's not going to affect my interest if i buy this that's what i'm going to do of these, which is the most compatible with even Steven? Um, I think long term, late game, the Mars card is what we want to be doing. Um, but for short term, it's going to be easier to make full houses. Um, so I'm going to pick up the Earth card. And then now if I wanted to with the full houses, this Zany Joker is compatible. Um, but I'm going to pass because I know I already have enough scoring so I can go ahead and just save my money for interest. Here I have the option for here's my full house. It's upgraded. I have the constellation. Um, I think how much is this? This is 600-ish points. So I'm going to discard it looking for even cards. Um, or maybe I'll do this. And then just look for another four or any other pair. 
of even cards. Like that. All right, this one will definitely work. All right, and now I know full house with two even cards, 1600 points, passes the next round, passes the boss round. So I'm good. I don't have to spend any money. I don't have to, but I can, you know, play around a little bit. Uh, Hermit, we got to take it. Doubling our money here. Uh, the Lusty Joker rewarding us for playing hearts. So, you know, with my full house already leveled up, this hearts with the full house is not necessarily compatible. But if I take this Joker, it does kind of leave me open to different possibilities. Um, I just, you know, as far as like how deep are we invested, the one planet card is not necessarily very deep invested. So even though this may not be, you know, compatible with full houses, we can still pick it up just to diversify and then keep ourselves open. Um, and so that's kind of, you know, demonstrating again the power of the yellow deck for new players with all of this extra money, you have the freedom to experiment and don't lock yourself into uh, one path too narrowly. Uh, as far as these Arcana packs, I'm going to pick up the small one first, but I am interested in buying both of these. Uh, Hermit for $20, or I can use Death to make an extra even card, you know, maybe an extra six is probably not going to be that big a difference, so I'm just going to take the money. And then now with the other Arcana pack, the Jumbo, I've got the opportunity to remove cards from the deck, or just take $20 or you know, some other kind of random tarot cards, you know, some other uh, bonuses here. I'm just gonna take the money. Uh, I'm good on scoring. I don't need any help with scoring, so it's fine for me to take the money. Now something to think about, now that I have all this money, what am I doing with it? You know, there I had the opportunity in the tarot or the Arcana pack to, you know, get some card removal, get the hangman, get some kind of deck modification, and I chose the money instead. Well, why do I want the money? What am I gonna be doing with the money? Probably what we're gonna be doing with the money is we're going to be uh, buying all the booster packs, we're going to be uh, shopping, you know, doing the re-rolling. And so if I want to re-roll, it is most cost effective to spread out the re-rolls. So I will, even though I don't need the scoring, I'm going to buy a re-roll now and then, you know, maybe another one in the next shop and another one in the next shop, and that way spread out the re-rolling. Um, you could re-roll into some value generating joker like the golden joker, and then, you know, it pays for itself right away. Um, here I've got uh, some options. The flash card is another of these infinitely scaling ones where every time I re-roll is now going to give me uh, a permanent molt bonus. So I am going to take that. I am going to take the flash card. Um, the half joker uh, is not compatible with what I'm trying to do here. Okay, that one I definitely don't need. I definitely am not interested in playing three or fewer cards, so I'm going to leave that one alone. All right, let's go into the next round. Uh, with this help here, okay, I already said that um, full house will definitely win. Two pair with the help of the Lusty Joker and the Even Steven, this will also definitely win. So I can just play it if I want. He said definitely win, but it was close. All right, um, I already have the one Earth card invested. Uh, before I take this, I'm gonna open the Arcana pack first. There's a chance, a low chance, I could get a fool. And if I get a fool, I'm gonna copy the hermit instead of copying this earth. You know, just like we scripted it. Okay, we've got the hermit here. We do have the option we could turn some odd cards into even cards, um, but we don't need to do that. We could turn some cards into hearts to go with our lusty joker. But this common joker is replaceable. I don't necessarily have to stick with this. Uh, I'm just gonna take the raw 
money instead. And really what I'm looking for is save my money for an uncommon joker, an uncommonly powerful joker that's really gonna pull me in a direction. For now, we're just floating by, we're just you know leaving ourselves open to different options. Uh, let's take a look at the standard pack here. So we do have some hearts, we do have, uh, these are even cards. So this two of hearts with the red seal is going to re-trigger even Steven and re-trigger Lusty Joker. This is a slam dunk here. Later on, we can put, uh, we can make this a steel card. We can make this a gold card. This will re-trigger those kinds of effects. If this turns into a lucky card, that will also re-trigger. Red Seal is highly valuable. All right, I'll take the Earth just, uh, you know, I'm not necessarily married to full houses, but we'll take it just because we've got the money and just, you know, so we can keep our options open. Uh, I am thinking about this Matador. I keep saying you always want to be looking ahead at what the boss is going to be. I never do because I'm forgetful, but you know, you get the opportunity. You can play better than me by always looking ahead at what the bosses are. Uh, the mark says we've got face cards are drawn face down. And those face down cards, they don't do anything with this matador. So one thing we can do, we can speculate. I can take the matador here and maybe it doesn't do anything on this boss, but maybe it'll do something on the next boss. And like I said, spread out our rerolls. So we'll do one reroll here. Um, I could replace one of these jokers with the abstract joker. This would be a little bit safer right but these have higher uh ceiling right like this goes up to 20 with the lusty joker this goes up to 20 with the even steven or potentially higher with the red seal card um i think on average you know if we're going to be playing the full houses we're not going to have as many hearts so maybe the lusty joker is worse if i want to replace it with the abstract joker um, I don't think that's something that we need to do, but that's something that we could think about doing. What I'm going to do instead, the boss is, let's see here, the boss is only 1600. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm gonna replace the Lusty Joker with actually, I'm gonna get the Drunkard. And so I'm not going to score as much, but it's gonna be easier for me to find my hand. With the two upgrades on the full house, and if I do an even Steven, if I do all evens full house, that will get me 1600 points, no problem. Um, I do have money to do more rerolling. So instead of doing one reroll per each shop, let's do two rerolls like that. Uh, we do have this rare Joker, the Obelisk Joker. Um, this is one that we did in our first run on the red deck. So if you haven't seen that already, uh, check that one out. Uh, we're not going to do it again. Uh, we're going to try to, you know, if you're going for an obelisk type run, it plays a little bit different, a little bit weird than what I would consider like a normal kind of average run. So for the demonstration purposes, for the learning purposes, uh, let's not do this again. Maybe we'll do it again, you know, way in the future with this series. All right, the next round, okay, we can go into the boss here. The extra discard to help us find our full house, not just any full house, but a full house with even cards. I know these are face cards that I can get rid of, so maybe we'll do that. More face cards to get rid of. Now I have to choose between eights, tens, and fours, and twos. Um, I do have the one extra two, so I'll get rid of the four. All right, we've got sixes now. I said we have the one extra two in the deck, so maybe I'll get rid of the tens and the eights, keeping the sixes. All right, we've got, again here, we already threw away a four. We already threw away a 10, so we might as well throw away another one. All I need is one more two and one more six. So we got the twos, we have some sixes. 
Full House does it, Two Pair definitely doesn't do it. We saw it with the Lusty Joker, we were barely able to do it with Two Pair. So now let's play these aces just to get rid of them. So here is discarding. And then here's the full house that we said would win it. Even without the help of the even Steven, you can see already uh, the flames started, you know, on the first card already. Uh, I was supposed to pay attention to how many points that was. The next round, anti three, if we go here in our collection. Okay, so 300 in round one, 800 at the first round of anti two. So that's, you know, about a little bit less than three times. What And the difference here is just one scoring joker is all you need. Then the difference between 800 and 2800 is more than three times. And so now what I want, I want definitely three solid scoring jokers in order to get 2800. Or, you know, if you have some planet cards that can make up for it, you don't necessarily need three scoring jokers and so let's see here i've got flash card is giving me plus four that doesn't count uh constellation is giving me plus 20 percent that doesn't count even steven is giving me plus 20 molt okay that checks the box so i'm looking for some other way to score let's before i open these standard packs Let's re-roll for jokers because the jokers that I get, that could give me information that could decide what kinds of cards I'm looking for. So, okay, let's think about this. Green joker, that's one where you're rewarded for not discarding. If you never discard, then this keeps increasing every hand that you play. Uh, maybe that's something that we could do. Uh, we've got the scary face uh, gives us chips for face cards. Maybe that's something that we can do. These are not necessarily compatible here, even cards and face cards. So between these, if I had to pick one, I would rather have the molt from the even Steven and I can get my chips from full house just leveling this up with the planet cards. All right, for the green joker, would I rather have the green joker or would I rather have you know, this flash card that's also growing here. Um, I'd rather have the flash card. And so let's reroll looking for more different jokers. Uh, for example, here the Wily Joker giving us chips if we play uh, a full house contains three of a kind. So this is exactly what I'm looking for. This is totally solid. Now I just have to figure out what joker I wanna get rid of. So I have either Drunkard makes it easier for me to find my full house or the matador i'm hoping that i can't see what the next boss is but i'm hoping that the next boss is compatible uh about one third about one third of the bosses you can get value from matador so if you wanted to play safe i would sell the matador i would pick up the wily joker um, if you want to play greedy sell the drunkard take the wily joker Let's, for the purposes of demonstration um, and you know tutorialization, let's play it safe. As boring as that is. All right, now that I know, okay, I've got all my scoring needs are met, I can go ahead and invest now in the standard packs. All right, so here I've got a even card with the red seal and it's foil. That one is a slam dunk. Except, consider, we also have a purple seal. And we talked before about sort of how powerful it is to get these purple seals. And you can, uh, when you get the tarot cards from them, you can use the death tarot to make more copies of your purple seals and then get more purple seals per round. Definitely long term, that's going to give you the most value. Um, if we want to play safe, if we want to play conservatively, um, I think. The four is a, a slam dunk here. All right, in the next standard pack. 
So now I've picked up the even cards. These are all odds. Even though this blue seal has the potential to give us planets, uh, I don't want to, you know, bloat the deck. So we'll just skip here. No problem. Uh, we can go ahead and take the voucher. We got plenty of money here. Voucher allows us if we get a bad boss, we can reroll the boss. Um, some that are kind of challenging, you know, there's the one that debuffs all your face cards. If you're playing face cards, if you're playing, uh, you know, maybe all hearts and then you get the one that debuffs your hearts that could hurt you for us playing full houses with even cards. Maybe there's not much danger, but also we have the extra money anyway. Um, we can go ahead and buy this tarot card. Uh, this gives us in an emergency situation if we need the extra molt we can do that um, or i can put this on my red seal cards um, and get the re-trigger effect now with the extra money here i am going to do one more reroll. there's not necessarily anything that i'm looking for but i could you know there could be an uncommon joker or there could be some planet cards there could be this fortune teller and so the question is you know this is another one of those where every time you play a tarot card it's going to keep getting bigger is this better than what i've got going on already is this better than you know my even steven that's giving me 20 already is this better than my flash card that's also permanently growing here i think between these flash card is a little bit easier all you got to do is reroll, get two bucks if I see the fortune teller later in the run after I've already played my uh, tarot cards, then I would consider it. And since it's a common, there's a good chance that it could come up again. Uh, do I want the suit changer? Do I want to pivot from full houses into flush houses? Uh, that is a possibility. That's a consideration. Uh, also, there's an unlock in the collection for you know having a bunch of clubs or playing a bunch of sevens of clubs is one of the unlocks. Um, but I think I'm going to, for the purposes of this run, I'm gonna take it. I've got the money, why not? That's what I said, you know, with the, uh, the yellow deck here with all the extra money, you know, let's just experiment. Let's just play around here. Uh, let's go for even cards, knowing that I have extra twos and an extra four. So here, do something like this, keep the tens, maybe get a two. Uh, we got the tens, uh, between two and a four, which am I hoping to see more? Uh, let's go four, because it's higher, doesn't really matter. I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna discard three, and then, oh, I'm trying to draw either a four or a two. Uh, you should just commit, you should just pick one. So I'm gonna go for the four. I have, you know, here I have a combined fours and twos that I could draw. Here I have just fours that I could draw, but, uh, you know, discarding more cards, drawing more cards, that allows you to, you know, there's more security in that. Also, I don't necessarily have to hit the four. If I throw away these, I could draw two sixes. I could draw um, two eights or something like that. So this gives me more possibilities. Uh, there we go, we got the fours. Uh, I was talking about, you know, maybe I could change the suit on these. You know, maybe I could use the moon to make a flush house. Uh, not with what I've currently drawn, but maybe if I do this, maybe if I discard these looking for a four of clubs, that would work. I already know that the full house is going to win it for me, so, you know, there's no real danger there. Um, I didn't get there with the fours, so I'll just, I'll hold on to this moon for later. I will be using the empress. Now I've got, you know, with the red seal here, I've got the re-trigger. That's 20,000 points. Okay, that's only because we had the red seal card. If we didn't have the red seal card, we wouldn't have gotten nearly as many points, but we did. 
so when we're looking at the next round, you know, whether or not we could get this 4,000, definitely we could get this 4,000. Okay, so I don't need more scoring. Maybe what I'm interested in doing is getting more money. So before I make a decision on these jokers, I'm gonna open these Arcana packs, starting with the smaller one. Oh, we could pick up $11 from Temperance. We could get the scoring from the bonus cards. We could do the suit changing. Like I said, maybe making flush houses. Uh, since I already have the moon, since I already have the clubs, I'm not gonna go for the flush house. And I don't need the scoring. And there's only like a four here. And you know, maybe I'm looking for fours and twos. So I'm gonna pick up the Temperance instead. All right, with that, we'll go into the second Arcana pack. Again, here the option for more money. I'm going to go for more money. Uh, you know, looking at these here between the wheel and temperance here, wheel not necessarily guaranteeing value. Uh, I'd rather have the money, which I can spend on rerolls to level up the flash card. Um, there is some consideration for this Wily Joker. Maybe I don't need it. Maybe I can sell this and take the Faceless Joker and then use the Faceless Joker for money. That would be a somewhat risky thing to do, but it might pay off. Uh, for the purposes of tutorialization, let's just play it safe. Let's do one reroll. Here, um, I'm tempted. Four bucks, I'm tempted. So right now what this drunkard is doing for us is, you know, we get an extra discard. It makes it easier for us to find our full house. Let's say I didn't have the discard. Let's say I had to play garbage hands and I lose money from playing those hands. I can gain $4 to make up for the hands that I'm using if I have to burn some hands. So this is definitely, this is an upgrade. This is worth it. Now, let's see here. We've got star if I want to make diamonds or we'll go for one more reroll. Greedy Joker for diamonds. Now we've got the blackboard. Blackboard is again, one of these multiplicative bonuses here. So these are end game, you're looking for these. End game, you're looking for maybe two or three of these in order to finish it out. And so something to think about is as this flash card gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you maybe the flash card gets up to 20, gets up to 30 molt. Let's say 30 molt flash card. Then this even Steven plus 30, or sorry, plus 20 is only worth, you know, an extra 40%. Whereas this times three is worth, you know, way more than that. Uh, same thing with the chips here. If we got uh, full house is giving us a hundred chips right now. This is times two Except, you know, if we've got this uh, foil card here, you know, and we've got 200 chip space This is only plus 50% And so I don't think I need this wily joker. I'm going to replace it with this blackboard here so the thing to note about the chips jokers it's not good as the first joker that you get, the chips jokers. You wanna go for the plus multiple ones first. Then you want kind of a balance of plus chips and plus mult. And then in the end game, most of your chips coming from your planet cards, you can get rid of the plus chips jokers in the end game. And so that's kind of what we've done here. We've got the times mult, that is the end game. Now I don't need the plus chips. And then we can go to the next round. All right, let's see here. We've got looking for fours and twos. Fours and twos. There's fours. And I've got the 10 here. Let's still go fours and twos. So if I wanted to make a flush house, what you would do is you would go two fours and one of something else, turning it into clubs. And so like if I go these things into clubs, the only out that I have is the two of clubs. 
Whereas if I go, if I throw these away and I keep the 10, any 10, I can complete my flush house. And so if I wanted to go for the flush house specifically, if that was the build I wanted to go, that was my end game, I would discard the two here. Um, I'm not necessarily super attached to that flush house idea, so I'm just gonna discard these um, and then hope to draw that two. Still looking for that two. Did not get there on the two. We do have the option for maybe we want to be playing a flush, but this flush I know is maybe, you know, not worth that many points. Is that true? It's not going to be worth 4,000. Though we do have the blackboard now tripling our score. So if I do this, if I make the fours into clubs, which I was already going to do, and I make the two into clubs, so that I can make a flush house later. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> uh, because now it's not hearts and I can't make my flush. Oh well, here we go, here's the garbage. Uh, here's a six is unfortunate because then we can't do this blackboard thing. Is this full house going to do it for us? Leveled up to level three. We've got the molt from the flashcard. We have the molt from the even Steven. Does that, you know, hit this like three Joker ish benchmark? Uh, probably. Let's ship it. Yeah. So there you go. One scoring Joker, two scoring Joker, and then, you know, this 20% not really counting, but I have uh, the extra planet cards. So that three. Two and a half ish Joker threshold. Uh, that's how I knew it was going to be about 4,000 points. All right, next we've got okay, the extra hand size, like the drunkard, just making it easier for us to find our hands. Plus 12 for three of a kind. We already have plus 12 for free with the flash card, so I don't need that. Let's go here between Arcana and Celestial Pack. I'm going to reroll first, looking for, you know, if there's a planet card, I can decide whether or not I want duplicates. All right, strength card, I definitely want, because that's gonna make it, I can turn my odd cards into even cards, I can turn my uh, aces into twos, or now with the opportunity to get the scholar, I can turn my kings into aces. And so now we're kind of pulled in different directions here. You know, with this being polychrome, maybe that's an incentive to go for aces. Is this polychrome effect on the scholar, is that better than what I'm already doing with my fours and twos? I say that because, you know, I'm thinking about maybe I want to replace Steven with this scholar. Uh, between those, I think... I think the safer thing to do, I think the correct thing to do is just stick with what we already have, the fours and twos, and forget about this even being polychrome here. Um, one thing you can do is you can get rid of this golden joker and then pick up the scholar. But, mm, I am tempted. Yeah, let's do this. Let's get rid of Steven pick up this scholar you know with the polychrome effect and then we can go uh, celestial pack arcana pack that's gonna be twelve dollars so I'm not gonna reroll anymore I'm just gonna go celestial looking for full house or could be four of a kind now with the aces mega arcana pack I have the option for money and okay, I can do this suit change. I can turn diamonds into spades for my blackboard. Um, I don't need the scoring. I don't feel that I need the scoring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the wheel instead. And since I did get the hermit, since I did get the extra money, I'll do an extra reroll. 
giving us wheel if I want it. Do the wheel. For this fool, instead of doing the wheel, I'm going to do the strength. And so now with my aces, I can go all four of my kings into aces. We only get to play one hand type. One hand type, okay. So we want to find our full house right away, or if we're concerned about this, we can play, we could do the reroll here. So the thing about this playing only one hand type is you, you're not allowed to play garbage hands. You're not allowed to play high card to just get rid of cards. We need to, in three discards, find our full house right away, or else we're in potentially some trouble. To play it safe here, you know, with the deck that we have, I think we can do it. We have the strength, we have two strength cards. We can easily make full house on demand. So like right away, we got these kings. That's a full house. Or maybe we can go deeper. So if I wanted to, wait, already if I play this full house, I have the black cards for the blackboard. I have uh, clubs and spades. Yeah, let's ship it. Forty-two thousand points for that. All right, we're good with score. Uh, we don't want the magic trick because remember, these playing cards that we get are going to be um, not enhanced. Though I will say there's an unlock for you know buying trading cards from the shop, and so maybe we should take it for that reason. Uh, we've got the celestial pack is something that I'm interested in. Standard pack to look for more aces now. Okay, we didn't get the aces. Before I open the Celestial Pack, I'm going to reroll one time. Don't need any of these. Mmm. Okay. It's starting to get really interesting. All right, so now we've got uh, the Idol. That's the one that we did in our last run on the blue deck. We did all the Kings of Diamonds, I think it was. Um... I don't plan on going to endless mode in this run on this deck. And so, you know, with this kind of randomly picking a card, uh, this kind of like high risk, potentially high reward with the times two here, typically that's not what you want. Uh, this is typically too risky for the average run. However, this times four for four of a kind, we are super into that. So let's... Let's get rid of the flash card. All right, so this is giving us 18 molt and it's gonna keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, this is giving us, you know, however much, you know, maybe three aces, three of a kind gives you plus 12 or four aces gives you plus 16. So definitely less than this flash card. Uh, I think the safest thing to do is just get rid of the golden joker. And then, you know, with these jokers, uh, you know, Scholar, Constellation, Blackboard, and uh, this is the the family. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember which one the the four of kind one is. Anyway, with all those jokers, all this uh, X molt here, that's it. We already have enough to win. So maybe let's say this. Let's say for the demonstration purposes, for the tutorial purposes. Uh, let's say we didn't get this. Let's say we got something else instead, uh, something else that we didn't want. Uh, let's see if we can still win even without that, you know, very powerful technology. Let's go Celestial Pack, looking for four of kind, or Full House will also work. I have to decide: Do I want Strength or four or this Full House from my Fool? And I think I would rather have the. I would rather have the uh, full house for the scoring because this would allow me to score with not just aces but some other cards. And so I'm going to go ahead and take the earth here and then use the fool to make another earth. Now we do have the question of to grow my constellation here, is this worth it? 
to pick up this planet card, this planet card that I'm not using at all? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say we have plenty of money, no problem, let's go ahead and use it. And then go into the next round. All right, uh, notice here uh, our full house is 12 now, four of a kind, 10. So this uh, flash card is, this is a times three right now, plus 20 on top of 12, that's a times three. What's the boss? I'm supposed to check the boss. No discards, that should not be a problem because we do have the extra hand from the grabber. I'm looking for aces to make my full house. Aces, maybe I have extra fours. Let's do that. Uh, we got the jacks. Let's look for aces. So we do have this full house fives and aces. Since we leveled up the full house, since our flash card is giving us plus 20, uh, this will work. Maybe I'll get rid of this two for my blackboard. Maybe since we got... Okay, I'm not gonna get the blackboard value, but I believe this full house will work. Twenty thousand for just two aces. Okay, another earth card for more full houses. Yeah, let's just go all in on full houses. Full house there. Celestial pack. Uh, I want to make sure I buy these so that I can level up my constellation. Mars leveling up four of a kind as a backup. Uh, full house here on the earth. Or do I want to go for Mars? Let's, whichever one is the big one, we'll just keep making it bigger. So there we go. Full houses again. Uh, instead of re-rolling this time, now we're down to just $33. Um, I'm going to save my money for the interest. If I reroll, I go down to 28 and you know, I might want to save my money for buying the booster packs in the next shop. All right, we need 9,000 points here. I will note that, you know, this flash card here, it's kind of doing a lot for us. It's giving this plus 20 molt. And so maybe let's see what happens if we don't have it. Uh, we do have a lot of, you know, the planet cards leveling up our full house here. So now 16, that plus 20 from flash card is only like a times two-ish that we lost. All right, let's, we have the enhanced fours, by the way. We have the molt fours. So let's look for those. So here's two fours. We threw away a two. We've got the aces and the fours. Uh, and even without the blackboard, you know, if I wanted to try to turn on the blackboard, I would discard these, but even without it, we can see. So there already, before these jokers go off here, we had plus 40 molt, and then another plus 20 from the flash card was only plus 50%. And so, you know, if we did uh, two thirds of this. This is still thirty thousand, even without that flash card. And so, even though the flash card keeps scaling permanently, keeps scaling infinitely, even if it got up to plus twenty, plus forty, plus fifty, it's still less than what we're already getting as our base from our hand, and then plus the scholar here. So don't get too attached necessarily. Uh, Diet Cola, I can get a double tag for, you know, if I want to take a skip. Now the skip is more valuable. Uh, I said, you know, we can keep our eye out for some specific, there's a few skips that are actually very powerful. So maybe we'll do that. With my Arcana pack, what I'm hoping to do is, you know, number one, make more aces. Number two, get rid of my red cards. Uh, so for example, I could turn these three into clubs or I can just straight up remove them from the deck. The kings always have the potential they could turn into aces. So I'll get rid of these two red cards with the hanged man. 
All right, in the Arcana pack here, uh, we've got money or money, or we can do those clubs. Um, since the clubs are, or sorry, since you know the the red cards, if we get rid of them, we can unlock our blackboard and then get an extra scoring. Um, we are able to score, you know, thirty thousand, forty thousand without the blackboard. If we add the blackboard, that's a hundred thousand. We've already won the game. We've already beaten the boss. The final boss is just 100,000 points. So I don't necessarily need the extra money. Um, if I were playing for fun, I would just take the money. If I wanted to play safe to make sure that my blackboard is activated, do I turn the aces into clubs first? I want to be playing my aces I want to be, you know, potentially not playing these. So I'm going to turn the other non-aces into clubs. You know, for consider uh, consideration with my blackboard. Uh, and then for the playing cards that are in the shop, I'm only looking for aces. I have extra money to re-roll here. Uh, might as well. And I have an empty joker slot. Uh, so maybe, you know, here's another multiplicative bonus requires us to add playing cards to our deck that's not something that I'm interested in doing it is powerful for the right build you know it's not too hard to just pick up a few extra playing cards from the standard packs um, you know you may get extra playing cards from the uh, hat voucher but for our particular bi build trying to focus on specifically aces I don't want to add random cards to my deck all right, and then let's win without discards. So I have two nines here. Let's try to find our aces. Or I guess any full house will work. So maybe if I do this, show me another ace. Or is it more important that we find our aces? Because if I definitely need an ace, I would do it this way. Even though, you know, you need a pair in order to make a full house. If I need the aces, if I was that desperate for scoring, this would be the way to do it. Throw away the pair, even though you need the pair to make the full house. Uh, there we did get the ace and we got a different pair. You know, it's okay to throw away the pair of nines because, you know, we can always get a different pair. Twenty thousand without the help of the blackboard. All right, here we've got, uh, the clearance sale voucher makes things cheaper. So we might as well pick that up first. Uh, we can go Celestial Pack, trying to upgrade our full houses some more. And this Spectral Pack. All right, Hex allows us to possibly make a Joker into Polychrome. So for example, you know, maybe I want to turn my constellation into polychrome, except it's going to destroy all of my other jokers. And so I'm going to lose my blackboard. I'm going to lose my scholar and, you know, all of the plus molt that it's giving me. The correct thing to do, the safe thing to do is just pass, just skip. Uh, if I want to be greedy, if I want to show off a little bit, I can sell everything and then make the constellation into polychrome. But we'll just skip here. And, you know, as far as these jokers, uh, this could give me, you know, extra chips here. I don't need the extra chips. So even though it costs $2 and I can sell it for $1, it only costs me a net $1. Uh, I'm just going to skip it. And I don't need the dagger either. <laughs> All right, uh, we've got four of a kind here. You know, I've got the uh, leveled up four of a kind if I want to do that. Um, I'm still going to look for my full house because my full house is 
quite a bit bigger than my uh, four of a kind still. So let's do that. And if I want to go for the aces, actually, okay, this is already five cards. So there we go. Um, I've got the threes and the fours. I don't need the aces but we can still keep going if we want. We've got extra discards. Maybe discard the red cards. All right, so we did it. We got the aces, we got the fours. Let's see what it looks like with the help of the blackboard online. And the red seal card. There we go, like I said, 130,000, enough to beat the final boss already, and it's only anti five. So now I want the Neptune to level up my constellation, but maybe before I use it, I'm just going to hold on to it. And then that way, you know, when we're re-rolling for more planet cards, this will block Neptune from spawning. Jumbo pack looking for aces, no aces. That's fine. Arcana pack looking for maybe death card to make more aces. Before I open the Arcana pack, I do have the extra money. I'm gonna re-roll. If there's an Ar uh, a tarot card in here, I can buy it and then in the Arcana pack, use it. Or if there's a, Arcan or a tarot card that I don't want, I can use the tarot card in the shop to block the duplication. Uh, I do want Mars. Jumbo. All right, so I could make another Mars card. Here's what I was saying with the death card. That's probably what I want. Do I want an ace for 20 chips and four molt? Or do I want a four for, you know, more chips and more molt? And the re-trigger with the red seal. Actually, that's what I want to make a copy of. Getting rid of this red five. And then we'll save our money. Continue saving our money. Uh, Psychic must play five cards. No problem. All right, we've got the four here. We've got uh, an ace here. Let's go ahead and just dig four. Now we've got six fours and six aces. Uh, for example, these fours. Uh, I don't even need the ace. I don't even need the uh, blackboard. And sort of demonstrating here, number one, the power of just the planet cards, just leveling up your uh, hands. And then number two, uh, we've got the X molt bonus on our constellation times two. This is multiplying all of that base scoring. All right. Um, Midas and Jolly Joker. Let's go Celestial, looking for more full houses. Or before we do that, let's re-roll. Okay, so now we've got Neptune, Jupiter. These are being blocked, so show me three different planet cards. Uh, for example, Earth. Now when we open the Arcana pack, there won't be a Hierophant is being blocked. Do I want Earth? Or do I just want the money? Or do I want to do the clubs, you know, getting rid of my red cards? I think the thing that's going to give us the most success is going to be getting rid of the red cards. Um, if I were playing for fun, if I were playing greedy, I would just take the money straight up, knowing that I don't actually need the blackboard to win. Um, you could take the earth here, but since we already have this level nine, you know, just one more on top of that, the difference between level nine and level 10 is not that big a deal. Um, it's probably better to get the money. So we'll do this, we'll do the moon. Let's go eights and 10 and Jack, turn those into clubs. Those are the cards that I plan on not playing. All right, Psychic. 
what am I looking for? I'm looking for my aces and my fours. There's fours, there's aces. And even with the blackboard, we know this is already uh, 30,000. 60,000, I guess. That works too. All right, let's, you know, here's that fortune teller coming back around this plus 21. I don't need, telescope is huge for us. So we've played 13 full houses. This will make it easier to find the planet cards. Uh, let's go Arcana pack. Let's go the Mega one first. The last card that we used was the clubs, right? We used the moon. And so, you know, maybe there's a chance that I get a fool card. And if I get a fool card, better chance of getting it from the Mega pack because it generates five cards. All right, uh, we can go, you know, get more planet cards to level up our constellation even further. You know, we could get money. I think, you know, between these two options, I think the planet cards are gonna help us more than the just raw money. Um, or I can, you know, turn these into spades or I can kind of do both here. So let's go spades. And then for my high priestess, let's go ahead and use these. And then turn on the high priestess. So we got the earth card. And another arcana pack. Maybe we'll get a fool for another earth card. We didn't. Uh, we can get these three into spades. All right, there we go. We've got all these clubs, we got all these spades. We don't have that many red cards left. So this blackboard, this is fully online now. We'll get the times three almost all of the time. Um, this is the uh, small blind that we just beat. I'm going to re-roll once. And okay, I could pick up another planet card for my blackboard and then go next. The wheel, one in seven cards drawn face down. No problem beating that one. All right, here we've got, uh, you know, three aces and two tens. That's already going to win it for us. We don't have any other sort of valuable cards in our deck, so we can just one shot right here. All right, uh, let's look for more aces or not, that's okay. Let's, before I open this Arcana pack, let's, what was the last card that we used? We used a uh, world for full house. That was the thing that we did? No, we used, uh, sorry, not world, we used earth. Uh, no, we actually used the world tarot card to make spades. I'm always thinking about the fool, even though it's you know rare, it doesn't come up all of the time. Uh, Hangman does allow me to remove some cards, so I could remove the red card, or the I guess it's kind of orange, the diamonds, and remove a three as well. All right, let's re-roll once. Magician, okay. That's something that I'm into. Uh, not necessarily for the molt, but you know, always gives you a chance of getting money. So maybe let's use the Jupiter and let's pick up the Magician and then go next. All right, now, uh, if you're in a situation where you don't have any of this X molt here, let's say I didn't have the constellation, let's say I didn't have the blackboard, then the rare jokers, um, I think about two thirds of them give you X molt. And so if you're like very desperate for X molt, that could be a situation in which you want to go for the rare tag to guarantee that you get that rare joker, to guarantee that you get that X molt. 
You can still get the X-Molt from a lot of different uncommon jokers. There's uh, options or, you know, if you only have one and you need two, then that could be a possible skip worth going for. You know, this guaranteed rare might be more valuable than just random rerolls. So that's something to consider, especially since we have the double tag here. So let's give that a try and then go into the boss here. Uh, can we get 40,000 with just this level 10 full house? All right, uh, this somewhere between a 10 and a queen. Uh, I know I can discard this. Uh, we've got the fours here, that's good. Maybe let's look for a four or an ace. We don't need the two anymore. All right, we got uh, these two fours and we've got our aces. So we've drawn what we need. I'm gonna go ahead and make one of these lucky, might as well be an ace. And then there's our full house. Forty thousand points, with the help, you know, we did have the uh, the red seal card foil. We did have the uh, red seal on the molt card, and we did have the polychrome here. So all of that together, we get forty thousand points. Uh, the next round, let's check here in our collection. The next round is going to be thirty-five thousand points. So we don't need as many for the next round. So if we you know, don't get there in the shop. If we don't get what we're looking for, we're still fine, at least for one round, or we could play two full houses, 30,000 points each. But we've got these two rares uh, with many of the rares giving us X Molt. Uh, for example, this one, I was hoping this one would come around because it's not discovered yet. And so we've got the times four, if we play four of a kind, hmm. That's a little bit different from what we've been trying to do, but I will take it for the unlock. Uh, the Baron giving us a reward for playing Kings. We did that one before. So we kind of whiffed on the uh, rares here. I did say, you know, the rares have a higher chance of giving you that X mult, but they're not all necessarily compatible with everything that you might be doing. Uh, I will take the blank voucher for the unlock associated with it. Um, in general, the upgraded version of the blank voucher gives you an extra joker slot. And so if you can afford it, it's worth to invest um, and then still have that chance later of getting an extra joker slot. The celestial packs are guaranteed now to give me the full house, earth. And, you know, even I can take there's the four of a kind, maybe as a backup. And then that's it. So I already know that I can get my 35,000 here and you know, I have the upgraded full house so I don't even necessarily need to play aces. So we'll go next. Noting here, we've got 26 molt on the full house. All right, uh, aces and fours, right? Aces with this fancy four. Pair of fours looking for an ace. Like this. We could, you know, just experiment here, see what this times four does with the four of a kind. You know, if I just eyeball it here, uh, full house is 50% more chips, 50% more molt. So, you know, this is about two times which means if this is four times, this is better. Even though it's a lower level. Their 55,000 was more than the 40,000 that we got in the previous round. And with that four of a kind, I know I can beat the next round. Uh, the boss, maybe I'll need uh, a little bit more technology. So maybe standard pack for our aces. Uh, for the Arcana pack, we're looking for, I don't know, more aces. Uh, we don't want any of these hearts or diamonds. Actually, it doesn't matter now that we don't have the black board, um, but we'll take a random joker. Okay, so Dusk here, 
on our final hand, re-triggering all of, you know, maybe these things, the scholar things. So this is right now, this is just a second scholar, except also re-triggering our foil and our molt cards. So maybe slightly better than just a second scholar. Let's, since we have the money, let's re-roll looking for, uh, it's a little bit too late for ride the bus. Or we can go for an eight ball here. Um, I'm gonna take the bus and, you know, just to demonstrate here. So if we go into the next round, okay, we could take $18. Um, I wanna play. I wanna play to, you know, see the shop and see what kind of opportunity that we could get. I'm going to look for my aces. So there's that ace. There's my four, my fancy four. I'm gonna keep going. This time, instead of going for the full house, um, I know four of a kind works, so I'm gonna go four of a kind aces. <clears throat> and I wanna demonstrate uh, leveling up this ride the bus. If we take it now in anti seven, how big can we get it? So let's go, you know, here I can play a six. Play an eight. Ooh, can't play a queen. So in one round, it's plus four. So in, you know, maybe four more rounds, we can get up to uh, plus 20 from the ride the bus. You know, which is not that low, plus 20 for one joker slot, even picking it up this late. But when we play our four of a kind here, all of this is happening first. Scholar is doing its thing. Uh, Dusk is copying it. And then after all of this, uh, it was like 80 or something like that. Then the ride the bus happens after that. And again here demonstrating with Dusk and Scholar and the family, we don't need any of this. We have the 200,000 points that we need to beat the boss, the final boss. Cool. So now we can just kind of play around. Uh, we can go buffoon pack here. Uh, I don't need any of this. I'm gonna pick up the magician first so that when I open the spectral pack, maybe I'll use it. Um, let's re-roll even. Okay, uh, rough gem rewarding us for diamonds, which we don't have. One more time. All right, that's not anything that we need. All right, the magician here. Uh, I am. I'm not going to use the magician uh, here. The purple seal we haven't discovered yet. We got the purple seals before. We got them from standard packs. So now with this purple seal, maybe what I'll do is I'll put it on a four that I want to discard, and I don't need any of this. All right, so against the window. The thing to note about the Dusk only works on your final hand, so you have to use all your hands. So I'm losing $4 in order to activate the Dusk. So if I can win without Dusk, I should try to win without Dusk. You know, what might that look like if I want to try to win without Dusk? So here I'm looking for my aces and fours. Okay, I've got the fours, I've got the aces. Uh, I have my leveled up-ish full house. So let's see, you know, what that looks like, a full house here. Uh, by the way, I've got three aces left, four fours. Mm, I don't have enough aces to make a four of a kind. And so maybe that's something that I'm slightly weary about. So without the help of this times four, Let's see how much this full house is worth. I don't think it's gonna be 70,000. Um, I think we can get halfway there, and I think another of the same kind of full house will get us the other halfway there. Yeah, so we got 45,000, that's about halfway there. Um, I've got sevens and tens here, if I wanna to try to do sevens and tens for a full house. Instead of the aces, I don't necessarily need the aces. 
Let's do that. I have sixes and sevens. Uh, I have to keep the sevens because I have two sevens left. So to increase the chance of me getting a full house, let's do it this way. Uh, there are the tens and the sevens. Uh, the fours would be better, but the sevens also works. You know, if I didn't get the fours. Interesting. Thought it would do it. It was close though. It wasn't that far off. Uh, here's another full house. Or, you know, here's just a four. Cool. Uh, we've got the paintbrush here for the extra hand size. We've got the celestial pack for the uh, Earth planet card. Looking for unlocks here. Arcana pack. Let's see. Uh, we could go for a glass card. We could go for a red seal glass card. I'm not going to be able to play it now, but I could, you know, use it on the boss. Uh, we could reroll here. We could pick up the hermit. All right, plus 120 chips from the bull. You know, that's gonna be less than a third of what we're already getting for our full house, so we don't really need that sort of thing. We could, don't need any of this. We could get another ace just to be safe here. You know, with the scholar, we wanna have our aces. Sure. And clever joker here, again, you know, with the plus. 150 chips for this uncommon for this common joker even though it's 150 still uh you know maybe this is acting like a slightly less than times two uh actually if we play the four aces then that takes us to 300 chips so this is like plus 50 percent here might as well what does the boss say boss says forces one card to be selected so this is one of those that kind of makes it harder for you to find your hands you know it might select a card and then force you to get rid of it something to keep in mind uh let's see here we can look for our aces we know four of a kind works so i'm gonna go for the four of a kind or here you know we've got the full house with the aces Let's discard the four, because I want to get the uh, tarot card. Death card, if I want to make another copy of this glass here, I could go four, or this uh, red seal card, like that. And again, let's look for the four of a kind aces. All right, we didn't get there with the aces, uh, but we can play this full house here. We won't get the family value, we won't get the uh, clever joker here, but we do get uh, the aces. We could save for the final hand with the dusk, but I think we can get there uh, in less hands and therefore get, you know, save us money. So maybe now we've got uh, jacks I don't need. I've got two more aces in the deck. I've got one more seven in the deck and three more eights. So let's do this. Fives? No. Ace or a seven? Can I get there? Yeah. We saved a dollar. All right, we've got a Celestial Pack that's going to give us the Earth. No other options here that I'm really interested in doing. Uh, I'm going to skip in case we get a Fool card. Standard Pack looking for more Aces. If we didn't get it, no problem. Uh, let's... Okay, we get plus 31 
for the fortune teller. Okay, that could be pretty big. Uh, you know, definitely maybe bigger than this clever joker. Well, it depends. It depends if we get the, you know, the scholar, we get the plus 20 molt from the scholar on top of, uh, you know, plus 20 here or plus 30 here, then maybe this 31 is not worth that much. But I think it's going to be worth more than the chips. Uh, between the Scholar and even Steven, I don't need both. I can pick up Strength here to maybe turn my Kings into Aces um, or Threes into Fours in an emergency. Here's that Clever Joker coming back around. Let's do, instead of even Steven, let's just pick up Misprint. And then we'll go straight to the final boss. All right, so here I'm losing one of my aces, unfortunately. Let's discard holding onto the queens here. You know, maybe we end up doing a, a full house. All right, something that's slightly awkward, if we are trying to do, let's say the dusk thing, and we're trying to get this re-triggers on our final hand, um, if I discard, hoping to pick up stuff and hoping to hold on to those cards, then as I'm using my hands, I could get in a situation where I'm forced to play my cards early. And so instead of discarding, I'm going to play this hand. Uh, the two is forced, so I'll do this. Maybe I'll do this, holding on to the queens. All right, unfortunately this four is forced and I'm not able to make a full house with it. So maybe uh, these here, I will play them. This queen is forced, uh, that's okay. I still got the two other queens. All I need to do is get four aces. Okay, we're losing an ace, but we do have three left in the deck. And so maybe if I do these, I can try to go for the four of a kind aces. I could go for the full house, but I think the full house is not scoring us enough points. So we are going all in on the four aces. Let's play it. All right, and now we are ready to go here. Um, I am still looking for my four of a kind. So we'll discard here. This is gonna give me a tarot card, so we might as well get rid of this Neptune. Tarot card. Oh. Uh, we got the temperance. We don't need uh, we got the strength here. If I wanted to make a full house, I could. And so this, you know, this is the situation where if my ace had been forced, then I would have to play it. Uh, whereas now the three is forced, I can safely discard. And so that's why we were, um, what was it? That's why we were playing our hands to get this dusk online instead of using our discards first. All right, with the strength card here, I am gonna turn this three and maybe this king if I want. And we'll go ahead and play the full house. Is that the move? Is that the thing with the full house? With the re-triggers? I think this, with the help of the dusk and the scholar, I think this will work. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll do the four of a kind because I know that definitely will work with the times four. There we go, 250,000. All right, we played around a little bit with this one, you know, kind of experimenting with, uh, you know, saving our money, spending our money, you know, pivoting into different types of possibilities. Um, so definitely uh, think about those sorts of things as you explore your own runs. And I will see you in the next one.